Joining me now is absolutely the pers perfect person <laughs> Uh, to talk about this, a man who crossed swords with Boris Johnson, fought an election against Boris Johnson, former mayor of London, uh, Mr. Ken Livingstone. Hi. Thank you so much for coming on. Pleasure to be on. I love watching it. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I can't expect you're a great fan of Boris, but do you think he was fairly treated? Um, in all my life, I've never met anyone who lies as much as Boris Johnson. And when I said that to Tory MPs, they all agreed with me. Um, Boris isn't really a politician. He wants to be a, a global celebrity. I mean, you actually look back, when he beat me for mayor, that eight years he was mayor, he did virtually nothing. The only one thing he did, he built a cable car to nowhere, which is still empty today. Well, he got Crossrail done and um, he, he led the Olympics. I started. It, but he didn't initiate anything except that... Rid he got rid of your bendy buses that kept on exploding. Yeah, I mean, literally. I think mean, Boris just wants to be a famous celebrity. Um, I remember... I, for, for seven years, Boris was a journalist working at the Daily Telegraph. And I bumped into Max Hastings, who'd been the editor while Boris was working there. And Max Hastings said, never leave Boris alone with your wife or your wallet. And I thought, well, why didn't you sack him? You know, but then, he really isn't a politician. I mean, to have been the mayor for eight years and done so little. And also, what did he really do while he was an MP? We, we were, I think, the last... European nation to go into lockdown when Covid erupted. Boris is never on top of anything. But that, that's um, on the advice that was being given at the time. What the scientists were saying at the time is if you went into lockdown too early, people wouldn't put up with it. Now, they may have turned out to be wrong, but that was... But why did the all advice the other European were being, countries were go being in given. before us? We were also the first to come out of it mm. to our huge economic benefit. And I wouldn't be at all surprised to discover that we've had the worst death toll. But we haven't. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we're middle ranking. Uh, Countries like Germany are worse than us. Mm. And we got the vaccine going, which was very much mm. um, Boris's decision. But it, no, literally, I mean, if you look at his collapse in public support, hard to think. I look back on, you know, Tory prime ministers like uh, Heath or Macmillan. And they never had a, such a collapse of support as Boris has done. I mean, his poll ratings are abysmally low. Well, when he left office, the Conservatives were only 4% or so behind mm. Labour. And now we're, what, dozen points, po po sometimes two dozen points but behind. We were you, much more popular I'm when Boris was I'm to do a bet charge. with you. I mean, I do believe Keir Starmer's going to win the next election because this has been... the. This 13 years has been the worst government of my lifetime. I, mean, I remember good Tory governments, competent ones. What Margaret Thatcher you thought so highly of. I mean, well, oddly enough, I didn't agree with her because she was abolishing my council. You're abolishing your council, <laughs> that's right. But then what was odd about that, in the, just before the, the mayoralty was created, we were at a party and she staggered up to me on her crutches and said, you must run for mayor. And I thought, well, why did you bother to tell me how you want me to run for mayor? <laughs> well, that may have been because it but upset it it's up the Labour Party, which it did at the time, didn't it? But there was a William Hague's wonderful line oh, yeah. about um, uh, the day mayor and the nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you see, back in 81, when I became the leader of Chelsea, there was all this nonsense in the media that I was an agent of the Soviet Union. I, I was supporting the IRA's bombing campaign. I had... And, of course, unless you're rich, you can't sue. I mean, I went off and saw a lawyer, and she said to me, well, by the time we get to court, you'll have to have spent £100,000. It's just hopeless. Um, but to get back to the privileges report, yeah. do you think it was wise of Harriet Harman, after she had tweeted her views, to serve as chairman? Doesn't that make it easy for somebody like me to say, look, this cannot be a fair tribunal, when the chairman revealed her view before hearing the evidence? Well, I've always respected and trusted. She, she came into politics to do things, not to promote herself. It, you could argue that it is a mistake that she chaired it, but I think I suspect she did it really well, and she's honest. Um, I haven't, of course, read the report. I'm looking forward to, at some point, being able to do that. But, I mean, literally, I, mean, I suspect that report is going to turn out to be overwhelmingly true. Well, I have read the report, and there are bits of it that I think are actually really quite speculative mm -hmm. and don't apply... Um, the standard of proof that you would, you would expect. I mean, during the three years of the lockdown, I just obeyed the rules. I stayed at home, hoping my, you know, waiting for my wife to get home from work and 
that was it. I mean, and it wasn't just I was doing that because that was the rules that had been brought in. I knew if you, if you get the COVID at my age, there's a one in 12 chance of dying. So I was quite happy to say, oh, I do my kids to have to bury, bury me this year. But the Prime Minister <laughs> had to be at work during this period. Mm. And that's the strange thing about it, and something I think the report doesn't understand, mm. that in Downing Street, mm. uh, you weren't having a leaving event as such. At the end of the working day, you were saying goodbye. You had people who were in the office anyway. But Whereas you, what the government was telling people not to do was to invite people into mm. the office to have a leaving do or whatever. It's people but, who were there regardless for work. all those parties that he did preside over was completely unacceptable, you know. I mean, literally, I just spent three years barely ever seeing my kids, you know. And, and literally, those parties were illegal, but also they were a risk. Well, there's only one where the police found Boris Johnson mm. uh, was at a party that was improper whilst but I bet he was there. Some were, and they'll dig those up at some point. Well, <laughs> that's pretty speculative, and that wasn't in front of the Privileges mm. Committee. No. So it seems to me that it's going much further than mm. the police went. And the police, of course, go to the criminal standard mm. uh, of proof. And but this no, is just a balance of no probabilities. No prime minister has ever been fined by the police before. This is unprecedented. Uh, uh, yes, but that's not to say that every prime minister um, was perfectly <laughs> behaved. Uh, I mean, no. you could think of Lloyd George, you could think of Walpole, Walpole mm. who certainly knew how to use the system of government to his own benefit. Yes, but I think of wonderful ones like... Clement Attlee, that post for Labour government, he was honest. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And he created, uh, for you and me, he created the best quality of life in British history. Well, I wouldn't agree with that. That's rather a different <laughs> discussion. I, I think the socialism in the 1950s caused us a lot of problems. But um, no, it, thank you. It created, uh, everything got better. That post for Labour government, I mean, that, it was only there for six years. Every, and when the Tories came back, they carried on... Everything got better years. once we got a Tory government in 1951. <laughs> but that's a longer another discussion. I'm so pleased to have Ken Livingston on, um, former combatant with Boris Johnson. But as always, I want to hear your thoughts. Mail, margaretgbnews.com.